Hey guys, welcome to the CSS Animations Crash Course. This is a beginner friendly course and we're going to look at things like animation with keyframes as well as CSS transitions. Okay, we're also going to build a pretty simple landing page with some entry animations. So if you're brand new to CSS, I suggest watching my CSS for Absolute Beginners video, which I'll link in the description. Uh, this is kind of a, a good next step after watching that video. Basically, there'll be three parts. We're going to start off with learning about keyframes. Uh, now, we're not going to build something that is that actually, you know, something you would deploy. We're just going to test some stuff out. You see, we're going to move objects around and change the shape, change the colors, things like that. Then we're going to move on to transitions, which are basically animations that need some kind of trigger, such as a hover. So you'll see when we hover over this, it'll actually change the shape, it'll change the color, and it will rotate. All right, now these are obviously not real projects, it's just to learn. Once we do that, we'll go in, we'll create this landing page, where if I reload, you'll see the heading comes down, the paragraph comes in, and then the button fades in, and we have a little transition effect here as well. All right, so that's what we'll be doing in this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoy it, and let's get started. I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, MailTag. MailTag is a Chrome extension that allows you to track your emails in real time for free. It also lets you track other cool things like link clicks, email reopens, and even the device that was used to open your emails. Be sure to check out MailTag by clicking the link in the description below. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I have Visual Studio Code open on the left here and Google Chrome open on the right. I have an empty folder called CSS Animations. OK, so like I said, we're going to break this up into three parts. We're first going to look at and experiment with CSS keyframes. Then we're going to move to transitions and then we're going to build our little landing page. All right, so first thing we'll do is create a new file and I'm going to call this keyframes.html. OK, so that's our HTML file, and then we're going to create a CSS file to go with it, which I'll call keyframes.css. All right, and we'll just put some standard HTML in there using Emmet. Whoops, this is not the right file. That's CSS. We want to go into HTML and put some basic HTML tags. Let's say keyframes and animation. And all we're going to need here, actually in both the, the keyframes and the transitions HTML, all we need is one div with the class of box. Everything else is going to be done in CSS. So let's save this. Now I'm going to open this. You can just open the HTML file locally, or you can do what I'm doing and use an extension. I'm using Live Server for VS Code. If you want that, you can just search for and install it. And that allows you to just right click and say open with Live Server. All right, so now we're, we have it open over here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just close this up. OK, so now we're going to go to our CSS file. And from here, let's just add a body style. I just want to make the background dark. So I'm going to say background 333, which is a dark gray. And you see, since I'm using live server, it's going to auto load. All right, so let's add the box class which is the div we, we added. And from here, we want to give it a background, let's say background white. Let's give it a width of, let's say 200 pixels, a height of 200 pixels. And there we go, there's our box. Okay, I also want to position it relative. We're going to be moving it around. All right. So now we want to start working with the animation. So there's a couple different properties that we're going to be using here. The first is animation dash name. OK, and you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it my animation. All right. And then what we want to do is set a duration for it. So we want to say animation dash duration. And I'm going to set this for four seconds. So we want to do four S. OK, now we want to take this name that we created and we want to create a keyframe. So we're going to go down below here and we're going to say at keyframes and then we're going to put in my animation. OK, because that's what we chose to use. You just put a space here. All right. Now in here we want to specify different points. All right. So we're going to start at zero percent. 
okay so it's zero percent of this animation uh, what kind of styles do we want let's start with just using a, a background color so let's say background color and it's initially white so that's what I'm going to use here is white all right and then let's go right to a hundred percent so when the when it's finished okay 100% is going to be when it's finished we're going to say background uh, yeah background color also set to white okay so it's going to start white and it's going to end white now in the process of the animation within this four seconds here or whatever you define we want to change the color okay to some different colors so let's say at 25 percent we want to set the background color to red okay i'm just going to copy this so we'll do 25 percent we'll do i'm going to paste this in two more times we'll do 50 percent Okay, so at 50% through, let's change this to green. And then at 75% through, let's set this to blue. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and you'll see it goes red, green, blue, white. Okay, so it goes through it and it's gonna do it all in four seconds. If I put this to one second and save, you'll see it'll go through it in one second. If I put 10 seconds, it'll go very slow. Okay, so it's going to fade through those colors. So that's how keyframes work. Pretty simple. Now, obviously, you can do other properties aside from just the color. So what I want to do now is, in addition to changing the colors, I want to move it around a little. All right, so I'm going to set this back to four seconds. And in addition to, we'll go to 0%. And in addition to background color, we're going to set the left to uh, zero pixels. Okay, so basically we want it starting here, zero from the left. And then we want to go from the top, zero pixels. Okay, so we just we basically want it to start where it is now. And then 25% through, we're gonna say from the left, we want it to go 300 pixels. And from the top, we want it to go zero pixels because we want it to stay at the top. We basically just want to move it over. All right, now at 50%, we want it to go down, okay? Because I want it to go in, in a square motion. So once it's at 300 pixels left, top zero, we want it to go down 300 pixels and still at left 300 pixels. So let's go ahead and add that. We'll say left 300 pixels and uh, top 300 pixels, okay? And then from there, we want it to go over back this way. So it'll be zero left because it's over to the, the extreme left, but it's still 300 pixels down. So we're going to set this to uh, left. Let's see, it'll be left zero pixels and it'll be top 300 pixels. And then the final position is going to be back where it started, which will be zero zero okay left zero top zero so let's do that top zero pixels and let's try it so we'll go ahead and save it it'll it'll auto load goes down back and up all right so that that is our animation so you can see we animated the color and the position now let's do the radius which will actually make it morph into a circle all right, so we're going to add to this and we're going to say border radius and we're going to set them all to zeros. So zero, 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 zero. So top right, bottom left. And let's go to the next one here. OK, so this one we're going to set the top to uh, 50 percent and then zero 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 all right and then at this point which is the 50 percent we're going to set border radius and we're going to set it to 50 percent twice and then zero zero and then here we'll say border radius and it's going to be 50% 50 
three times and then zero. Let me put a semicolon there. And then for the last one here, we're going to say border radius, and it's going to be 50% all around. So we'll just go like that. All right, so let's save. And it's going to go, it's just going to morph into a circle as it goes around. All right. Now there's some other properties we can use. So notice how it, it only went around once and it stopped. So you can actually set the uh, the iteration count. So if we go up here and we say animation dash uh, iteration count and we can set it to whatever we want. Let's set it to two and let's save and it should go around twice. Okay, so it'll stop after two times. And then you can also set it to infinite. And I spelled that wrong, didn't I? That should be an I. So infinite, and it'll just keep going. Okay, we can also delay the animation. So if we say animation dash delay, and we set it to two seconds, let's save that, and it'll wait two seconds and then begin. Okay, we can also set the direction if we say uh, animation direction and we can say reverse. So now if we save, it'll delay two seconds and then it'll go the other way. So notice that it's now going counterclockwise. All right, and then we can also set this to alternate. So what alternate will do is it'll go one way the first time. I'm actually going to comment the delay out and then it'll go the other way. OK, so it's going to go clockwise and then counterclockwise. All right, uh, let's see. Another thing we can do is the timing function. So if we say animation, where is its timing function? And we can set it to basically ease in or ease out, change the way that it, that it moves. So if we set it to linear, I'm actually going to um, comment out the, di the direction here. So let's save that. And now you'll see that linear, it's, it's basically at the same speed all the time. Okay, which starts and, and stops at the same speed. We can also do like uh, ease in. We'll save that. And now you can see it's easing in. It's basically starting slow and ending fast. And we can go ease out where it'll start fast and end slow. Okay, it'll ease out. And then we also have ease in and out, which I believe is the default. Okay, it'll it'll basically, you know, start slow and end slow. So it'll ease in and out. All right, and there's other ones as well if you want to check out um, if you want to check out the, the documentation at uh, MDN or whatever it is. Uh, but I think that that's good. Let's go ahead and stop this. I'm just going to say one for iteration. It's kind of making me dizzy. Now, if you want it to, to, to not reset at the end, you see how it goes into a circle and then it just kind of goes back into a square. If you want it to stay as a circle or, or whatever type of animation you're doing, then you can do animation. Um, what the heck is it? Animation. I forget exactly what it's called. Fill mode. Um, yeah, animation fill mode. No, that's not it. Or is it? Yeah, animation fill mode forwards. All right. So if we go ahead and do that, when it gets to the end there, you'll see it'll actually stay as a circle. OK, uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to experiment with this and, you know, maybe you, you want to take away the, the the positioning and just have it morph into a circle or or something like that, or use use some other uh, properties, maybe the opacity. Uh, but you get the you get the point. You can basically just change different properties inside of your keyframe for your animation. All right. Actually, let's try it without the. Um, without the movement. I'm just going to comment this out and copy it and then we'll just take out the positioning. All right, so we'll go ahead and try that. I'll save 
and it'll just morph into a circle, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to save this and, and I'll have the link in the description for you guys so you can download it. Now we're going to work on transitions. Okay, so I'm going to just close this up. Um, I'm going to copy the HTML here. And then we're going to create a new file called transitions.html and we'll paste that in and we're just going to change this to the title the CSS transitions and we're going to point to a file called transitions.css. Okay, we're going to leave the, the class of box and then close that up, create our CSS file transitions.css and let's go to transitions.html and we're just going to get a blank page. So again, I want to make the body dark. I just think it looks a little cooler. So we'll say background 333. And then we're going to take our box class and we're going to add some stuff here. Let's do the background. Uh, we'll say background white and let's do a width of 300 a height of 300 oh, should be putting spaces here um, let's put position relative and I want to set the margin auto I want it to I want it to go in the middle and then I'm going to set from the top 200 pixels all right, we'll save that. Now we have a white square in the middle. So as I said before, transitions are a little different because they need some kind of trigger. This is usually a hover or an active state, um, a focus state, something like that. So we're going to work with hover. All right, so um, let's go ahead and say box hover. Okay, and then we're going to change some values here. Let's change the background color. We'll just say background red. All right, so even without adding a transition, if I go, whoops, this shouldn't, shouldn't be a space here. If I go and I hover over it, it's going to turn red, but there's no transition. There's no middle point. It's just, it's, it's straight white to red. Okay, so transitions allow us to, to give us some, some, um, some flow to it, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. But to go, you know, from from white to uh, a lighter red to a to a to a darker red to a darker red until it gets to the actual red color. OK, same thing with some of the other properties. And I'm actually going to paste in here just all of the different properties that you can use with transitions. OK, basically, they have to be properties that have an identifiable halfway point. So it can't be just like uh, for instance display it's either none or block there's no in between okay if you want to do some kind of fade then you can use the opacity okay but you're not going to use display so let me just paste these in uh, just so you guys have it you know color positioning the width spacing font size all of this stuff has some kind of midpoint it's not just one or the other all right so you, you can use any of these in a transition so let's go ahead and add to our box class here we're going to say uh, transition property so we want to define what property we want to actually add to this transition and it's going to be the background okay uh, we also want to set a duration so i'm going to say transition duration and we'll set that to let's say three seconds okay and then i'm going to save that and then when i hover over it you'll see that it fades into the red instead of just going white to red automatically it fades in and then fades out when i leave the hover state all right and it doesn't have to be hover active we can use active which is when we click on it so if i click if i keep clicking you'll see that it'll get darker and darker all right, and then if I stop clicking, it'll go back, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it at hover. Okay, and I'm going to change it to one second, actually. It's a little too slow. All right, so that's the background. Now we can add other properties as well. So let's do the, um, let's do the border radius. So I'm going to put a comma here saying we also want to transition the border radius. So 
so border radius and then down here in the box hover we're going to say border radius and we're going to set this to 50%. All right, so let's go ahead and hover over it and now you'll see it'll morph into a circle and back which looks kind of cool. All right. Now we can set things here like uh delay. We can set the transition delay. Let's say we want to delay it um 2 seconds. So now, whoops. What did I do? All right. So it actually fades in as well, but if I if I hover over it, it'll wait 2 seconds and then it'll go. Okay. You can also change the timing function for transitions just like we did with the animations. So transition timing function and we can say linear. There's a bunch of them. But you can see that the um it also delays going back. But you can see the movements a little different. We can do like ease in and ease out. Let's do ease in. I'm going to take the delay off actually. All right. So kind of eases in. You see how it starts slow and then it ends up going fast. So, I mean, there's a lot of different timing functions. You can look that stuff up if you want to check the different ones out. Um, but yeah, so that's transitions. Now, if you wanted to set, for instance, a duration to be different for the background and then for the border radius, we could add a comma here. The first this would be for the background and then the border radius will say um 3 seconds. Okay, so we can separate the duration for the different animations. So you'll see in one second it'll go to red and it'll take three seconds to actually make the circle. And you can do the same thing with the delay. If you want to delay the border radius four seconds, you could do that, and the background would only delay two seconds. Okay. So let's do a rotate um, or a transform rather. So we're going to add up here. We're going to say transform. and down here we'll say transform and we're going to say we want this whoops we want this to rotate y and let's rotate it 180 degrees so we'll save that and I'll go and hover over it and it'll do the little rotate which is cool Now, if you don't want to separate, like if you don't want different durations or delays and stuff, if we want just one second for everything like that, then we don't have to specify all of these properties. We can actually uh you know what I'm going to do though is just comment this out so you guys have it. But we can just do all. So we can go like that and save and you'll see that it'll all just work together. Okay, it'll 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 animate all of these and it'll all have the same duration and stuff. Okay? So I would encourage you guys to just experiment with this, you know, these types of videos where we're not building an actual project. This is for learning purposes and for you to to, you know, try to get your own ideas and create some cool stuff, you know, and do do some a little more research, you know. This is just a kind of a beginner type crash course um there's a lot that you can do all right so that's for that's it for transitions now we're going to build our little landing page so i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call this landing.html and let's create another file called landing.css okay so the html we're going to put in our standard tags here title we'll just say landing page and we're going to link a style sheet and it's going to be landing.css. All right, now for the markup, well, it's not going to be too difficult. We're just going to put in a header and we're going to give this an ID of showcase. And inside here we're just going to have an h1 and we're going to say welcome to my site. under the header we're going to have a div with an id of content and then I'm going to give it a class of container as well okay and then I'm just going to say lorem 50 tab which if you're using emmet like I am it'll just give you 50 words of dummy text 
okay and then we're going to put in uh, an a tag and we're going to give this a class of btn all right that's not really going to go anywhere and for the text we'll just say read more all right so now we'll go to landing.html and it should look like this so let's go to our landing CSS and we're gonna add some styles here I want to zero out the margin and padding for everything so I'm just gonna use a reset by putting an asterisk here and saying margin zero and padding zero okay and then for the body let's see for the body we're gonna add Mar well we don't need margin zero uh, let's do font family so for font family I'm just gonna say Arial Helvetica sans serif we're gonna set the background color let's set that to a hexadecimal value of one two four seven five F which is a bluish color so we'll save that um, let's set the color of the text to white and let's set the line height to 1.6 and we're gonna set text align to center I want the whole site centered alright so there we go um, now we're gonna do the container okay so the, the paragraph has a container class and I'm just gonna set a max width of uh, 960 pixels and we're gonna set the margin to auto so it's pushed to the middle and then we're just going to add some padding I'm going to put 30 pixels on the left and right all right so we'll save that uh, let's see what else so now for the showcase which is the header okay so for the showcase all I want to do is set a height uh, I can't spell H E I G H T. Height is going to be uh, 300 pixels and save. All right, so now we have our showcase with the height. Now we're going to work with the H1, which is in the showcase. So showcase H1. And in here, let's, uh, let's set the font size to 50 pixels. I'm going to just set the line height. I cannot spell height today for some reason. Uh, to 1.3. Yeah, let's do 1.3. Save that. And we're going to set the position to relative. All right, so now we want to start our animation. So we're going to be using keyframes. Basically, what I want to do is I want this to come in from the top and just slide down. Okay, slide down to to this area here so we're gonna say animation and this is gonna be pretty easy it's gonna be easier than the stuff that we just did uh, we'll call this heading okay and then we're gonna go right under the showcase h1 and create a keyframe so we'll say keyframes heading and we're just gonna have two points we're gonna have zero percent and we're gonna have 100 percent all right, I know we had a lot more the last time, but we only need two points when it's when it starts and when it ends here. So we want to start above the fold right here where it's kind of like out of sight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set top to negative 50 pixels. OK, and then when it's at 100 percent, I want it to move down 200 pixels. So we'll say top. 200 pixels whoops all right so let's save that um, now it's not going to work yet because we need a duration so we're going to go up and say animation duration and let's make this three seconds all right so if we save that it's going to come down and it's going to go back to its original state okay now remember we have a property for that called animation fill mode and we want to set that to forwards so let's say animation fill mode forwards save and now it's going to come down and it's going to stay in its place all right so that's the first animation the next one we want to do is the content we want this to come in from the left 
So let's go down here and let's say ID content. And we're going to set the position to relative and let's set animation name. We'll set it to content. Let's set the duration to uh, we'll set it to the same thing. Three seconds and you guys can experiment with this and then we want it to stay. So we're going to do the fill mode of forwards. OK, and then we'll create our keyframe. What I'm going to do is just copy this. And this is going to be keyframe content. And except this time we're not coming from the top, we're coming from the left and we need it to be way over here and it's 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 quite wide. So what I'm going to do is set this to negative 1000 pixels. OK, and then for the 100 percent, we're going to set the left to zero like that. All right, let's put our semicolons in here. So let's save that. So that comes down that comes in and that's good. All right. So now we want to do the button. So that has a class of BTN. And let's say this this we want to display as an inline block. OK, we want it to go on on the next line uh, like a block, but we don't want it to go all the way across. So we want it as inline block. All right, we'll set the color of the text and the button to white. Let's do text decoration. None because we don't want the underline. Let's give it a padding of one rem on the top and bottom two rem on the sides. Uh, what else? We're going to give it a border of white one pixels and solid. All right, and then let's give it a margin top, move it down a little bit of 40 pixels and save. OK, so uh, right now, you know, it's it's just going to be there when the site loads and that's that's not what we want. So let's set the opacity to zero and that's going to make it invisible so we can't see it at all. All right. And then what we want to do is add our animation. So we'll say animation name is going to be BTN. We'll set the duration. So duration, we're going to set it to three seconds. Now, I don't want this to fade in while these are coming down. I want it to be afterwards. So we know that the duration of these two are three seconds. So let's set the delay to three seconds because that's when we want this to start. All right, so we'll set that to three seconds. We also want to set the fill mode to forwards. And let's see. Um, yeah, we'll do that. And then down here, we want to set our keyframes. I'm going to copy this. This is going to be BTN. And instead of doing positioning for these, what we're doing is opacity. All right, so 0% we're starting at zero opacity, so completely transparent. And then by the end, by 100%, we want it to be one, which is obviously in full view. All right, so let's go ahead and save. It's going to animate those two, three seconds, and then that button comes in. All right, so that's exactly what we want. And then just to add that little transition, that little flip, we can say transition dash property and we're going to set it to transform and let's set uh, transition dash duration to one second and then we're just going to add a hover state so btn hover and let's set the transform uh, to rotate Y 180 degrees. All right, let's try it. So we'll save. We have our initial animation button comes in. If we hover over it, we get the little flip effect. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you learned a little something. And again, I'd encourage you to to explore and, and uh, experiment for yourself 
with some of these animations. Uh, and this is just a basic introduction. And uh, yeah, you may want to you know look at some blog posts or uh, you know some articles that have to do with with CSS animation if it's something you're interested in. Uh, I know I've done videos on on some libraries like Animate.CSS, and that stuff makes this easier. I think we actually did something similar to this with Animate CSS, but this shows you how to do it with just you know just core CSS not having to use a library so hopefully you know you can appreciate that uh, but thanks for watching if you liked it please leave a like if you're not subscribed and you like these types of videos please subscribe and I will see you next time so I just want to give another shout out to MailTag who sponsored this video MailTag is a free Chrome browser extension that allows you to track your emails in real time I've been using it myself for about a week now and I can't recommend it enough on top of email tracking, MailTag has a bunch of other features like desktop push notifications that alert you when your emails have been opened, link click tracking that shows if people have actually clicked on the links in your email, and a ton of other cool features. Again, all these features are completely free. Be sure to check out MailTag and click that link in the description.